Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today I have a couple of different things that I want to share with you. First off, the production models of the DCC Concepts Aegis system have finally arrived. So I want to share with that with you. We'll do an unboxing, and uh, if there's time, I'll get it installed and we'll give it a test drive. Also, I wanted to go back uh, to a topic we did back uh, a month or so ago, and that is the deoxid track cleaning solution uh, test that I did here on the Helix. And uh, I, at the time, I told you that I would report back to you in a few weeks. So I'm going to do that, and we'll keep following that over the coming months. So let's go ahead and get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now, as I said in the opening, I uh, received the pox from the DCC Concepts guys in the UK. And this is one of the production models of the DCC Concepts Aegis system for the power cap. And I did a review on that back on December 1st and in uh, a couple of other follow-up videos. I showed how to install it and use the various components. And I'll put links at least uh, to a couple of those here for you. Now, the reason that they sent me a production model is that the version that I shared with you earlier was a, a prototype built at the factory in China and shipped directly to me for a review. So this one has a couple of small changes and it'll show you what uh, you get uh, when you get one of these directly from uh, DCC Concepts or from one of the vendor uh, hobby shops located around the world. Now, for those of you in the, U in the UK, you probably have already received one of these if you'd placed a pre-order. Here in the US, uh, I was told by DCC Concepts that they've already shipped a batch of these to Iron Planet Hobbies for shipment out to customers who pre-ordered here in the US. So you should be receiving yours already or in a few days. So let me go ahead, let's take a look down. I'll crack this one open and we'll see what's in here. Well, I'll say one thing for sure, they did a very thorough job of wrapping this for shipment to me here in the States. And it came by DHL Courier, so uh, it only took about three days, I think, to get this here. So let me pop this open. Squirt along the line here, and there we go. And then let's see. Okay, here we have it. Comes in a fairly large box. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, and we have a power cord for the uh, for U.S. outlets, and a little bit of padding, and that's it. So set the box aside. We'll set the power cord aside for now. And let's see. We'll undo the bubble wrap here and get it out. Okay, so, and it's protected with a layer of tissue paper, so let me pop the tape loose on that. Okay, so here's what we have. It's one of their nice leatherette type boxes, and it's got a magnetic closure here on the one side. Pop that open, and here is the manual. A nice heavy card color manual, spiral bound, with all of the information in it. So let me set that aside too, and we'll bring it out. Let's see what we've got. Okay. So right here we have a charging cord for the for the transmitter. And here's the UK cable, which apparently was packaged uh, with the unit in China. And let's see what else we have here. We have the uh, 24 volt 5 amp power supply. Okay. And we have the lanyard system and cap for the uh, 
for the power cab itself. This is the transmitter that goes with the power that the power cab plugs into so you can uh, have direct wireless control. Then we have a selection of connectors here as well as screws for mounting the unit. I'm going to put those back in here. Now let's pull the unit out and take a look at it. So they have a, uh, a warning here, some instructions for you on setting up power blocks and how to check uh, the power blocks to make sure everything is correct for your wiring. Nice touch. And let me close this and move it out of the way. Okay, so here's the main unit. Now one thing right off that you might notice is that you can clearly read all of the lettering now. So one thing they have done is somehow they have uh, etched in with a little bit of, of darkening here the uh, lettering. So uh, it's much, much easier to read, much, much more visible. Everything else looks essentially the same here. Uh, let's look down on the unit itself. The only thing that I know that they've done here is right here. They've moved these two uh, sockets here to allow more room for uh, fascia thickness here. Also, it looks like back here, this is now a toggle switch. It seems to me that that was a, a slider switch previously. I'll take a look at that when I pull the old one out. What else? That's about the only main difference that I can see here. It looks pretty much the same as the uh, pre-production model that I shared with you previously. So I'm gonna take it over to the layout, pop out the old one, insert this one, and we'll see how it works. Well, you can see I was able to get this installed very quickly. It made it very easy to just be able to take out these four screws, pull out the old unit, slide this one in place of it, and remake all of the connections for the, uh, for the track power and for the throttle network. So let's turn it on and see how it works. Okay, we got power. And let me turn on the transmitter. And we'll let that pair up and we'll be ready to run a train. Okay, we've got blue here, so they've paired up. No problems there. Let's see, let me pull a train out and we'll let it run. Okay, I've got this small uh, steam loco here in the center ready to go. So let me uh, power him up. So he's ready to run. Okay, and we're ready to back up a little bit. And I'm using the uh, wireless transmitter with this right now, so I can walk around without having to have it plugged in anywhere at all. See if I can bring it up here and uncouple. There we go. So that went very well. I was able to pop in the new Aegis system and get everything up and running in just a few minutes. So those of you that have again pre-ordered these, you should be receiving these soon if you haven't already. And uh, those of the rest of you, you might want to get an order in while there's still some available. Okay, let's move along and I'll uh, fill you in on my results with using Deoxid on the Piedmont Southern. Now, several weeks ago, I showed you a product that Larry Meyer of DCC Specialties had recommended to me for track cleaning. And it's a product called Deoxit. And I got this off of Amazon, and uh, it was about 28 bucks for this 25 milliliter bottle, so it's not cheap. But what he recommended that, you do, that I do with this was dilute this entire bottle uh, in one pint of isopropyl alcohol. And he said he's been using it for years and swears by it as far as cleaning track and preventing oxidation. And that's one of the things that we want to do is prevent that oxidation of the rails, which ends up creating a lot of problems for us when it comes to running trains. So at that time, what I did was I made up a pint of 
deoxic with isopropyl alcohol that gave me about a 5% solution. Then I took a train and did a test run up the helix because I wanted to know what it was going to be like beforehand. So I ran that train up. I used uh, 16 cars and um, ran it up without any problem. 17 cars, it started struggling quite a bit. So I kept it at 16. Then I went ahead and I cleaned all the wheels on the locomotive and all of the cars using isopropyl alcohol. Typical what I usually do. And then I took the isopropyl alcohol, saturated this piece of scrap cloth and ran it over all of the rails here on the helix, the approach track, and the track up at the top. So everything was sparkling clean at that point. Then I took the deoxic solution and saturated a cloth with it, just like that. And I went over the entire rails again using the deoxid. And, and presumably that uh, removed all of the oxides that had accumulated on the rails previously and anything that was there. Got it good and sparkling clean. And it left the deoxid on the rails to prevent further oxidation. So that's where that was the procedure that I followed. Now after that, I ran the train with all 16 cars up the hill. Now, I don't know if it was because that the wheels were so clean and the track was so clean that there wasn't as much traction or if the rails were still a bit wet because it was right after I had finished cleaning the track with the deoxid. But at any rate, I had to remove four cars from the 16 cars on the train in order to get it up the hill because it was slipping a bit. So I took it all the way to the top and then brought it back down. And then I waited about an hour and then I ran it back up again. Well, that time I was at, able to add back one car. So I was back up from, um, from 12 cars back up to 13 cars. And so I ran it all the way back, all the way down. Then uh, I did some more work here in the layout. And after another hour or so, I ran the train back up again and I was able to add another car back. So we were getting back pretty close. We had added, I had added three cars back at that point. And then uh, after, um, after overnight, I let it sit overnight and uh, had dinner and went to bed and um, basically, you know, left the layout alone. And then I came back down here the next day and I was able to add back that final fourth car and run all 16 cars up the helix without any problem. So basically that was what Larry Meyer had told me to expect that initially you'll get some, uh, some slippage and it, it will cut back initially. But after you've run the trains on the layout a couple of times, two or three times, that you'll be back to your original uh, pulling power without any problem. And that's what I found to be true here as well. So be aware of that. Now one thing I will tell you, and this is something that the deoxic uh, people tell you, is that on the metal that you have cleaned and used deoxid, after a while, you will see a little bit of black buildup. And you can see, I'll run a cloth on the rails here, um, there is a little bit of a, of a black stripe there as well still. And that's because the deoxid is continuing to work on the rails and remove oxides that may be forming. So it will keep cleaning the rails for you uh, over time and that's why you will still see a little bit of black oxide buildup on the rails. But this locomotive that I'm using for this, it does not have a keep alive in here and it runs fine without it and it runs fine over these rails. So I'll go ahead and run the train up the hill for you and you'll be able to see how it performs. Now the locomotive is, is going to be coming out from the staging area. So I'm going to run it on out here and you'll be able to see it coming in down here somewhere. I'm going to speed it up to about 30% oh, speed, maybe up to about 50, which is what I was running at the other day. Okay, that's 50% speed on the throttle.
Okay, the train is fully engaged in the helix now, so you saw it slow down as it entered the helix and started going around the curves. And that's to be expected. So let's let it go ahead and go around. And um, So right now the, uh, the locomotive and the train is about out the limit for what one locomotive can pull. So this is the locomotive plus 15 fully weighted cars plus the caboose which has lights in it and electrical pickups on the wheels which creates extra drag. Now typically what I plan to do when I run trains up this helix is 10 car trains behind a single locomotive. So this is going to run a lot easier in actual use later on. As you can see, we've made it up the helix without any real problems at all. Uh, it's going to go ahead and go on up. And I will stop it once it gets out onto the main section of the layout. Okay, so that is uh, the preliminary results after about a month now of using deoxic cleaning solution here on the rails. So far, everything is working fine. I'm not getting any real slippage, any real problems at all after the first couple of three runs up the helix. So no problems there. And as I said, I haven't had any issues at all with the locomotive as far as pickup goes. So I think everything is working fine as expected with the deoxic. Now the question is, what would it be like in about three or four months when uh, I'm having more trains running up and down this helix? Will dirt and crud accumulate? Will I have to go back and do some cleaning again? I just don't know. We'll just have to wait and see how that works out in the long run. Well, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed the unboxing of the Aegis system. I know I don't do many unboxings, but this one looked like a good opportunity to, to do one for you and show you what the system looked like when it actually comes directly from the factory through your dealer. And the follow-up on the deoxid, uh, people have been asking me about that. So, so far it seems to be working out just as expected. And down the road, I'll be reporting back to you at regular intervals if anything changes here or if nothing does change, I'll let you know that as well. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here again with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.